Welcome. These are my tips for getting your room sounding excellent with some acoustic treatment and a few other tricks. Now I started in audio and then later transitioned into video. So if you're a filmmaker and you also record a little bit of audio, I think you're really gonna find some of these insights super useful and I'm sure you can apply them to your workspace. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit that you want. And you know what? I would love it if you could just do me a favor and take a second to hit that subscribe button I'm making a push to 80,000 subs, so honestly, if you could, it would just mean the world to me and it really helps the channel. This video is not sponsored in any way, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds, any budget that I get from Patreon, I buy equipment, I do an unbiased review, and then I give the gear to my backers in a giveaway. So if that's of interest, do check it out. It's all linked below. Many thanks. So jumping into the tips, and firstly, where possible, don't use headphones, use monitors. And the reason I say that is because unlike headphones, monitors give you a really accurate representation of how your audio actually sounds. In turn, you'll make better editing decisions and your audio will translate better in the real world. Now I'm expecting someone in the comments, at least one person to mention the Slate VSX headphone set, which, the idea behind them is they simulate the experience of mixing audio on monitors. But the issue with that, and I heard they are good, I heard they have been sort of fairly well received, but the issue is that you can still get listening fatigue using them. Listening fatigue is a real thing to be taken seriously and it's kind of uncomfortable when using headphones for quite a, a long period of time and it can kind of mess with your hearing a little bit, so not great. Incidentally, if you are looking for a good pair of headphones that isn't the Slate VSX system, the type that I recommend is something like these uh, Sennheiser ones with the open back design. That's going to give you more accurate uh, bass response and um, is going to be less fatiguing, I think. And I'll tell you what, I'll link these below if you are interested, uh, you can find the, the, the right model. Um, highly recommended, one of the best bit of gear I've bought, full stop. Tip two and moving on to acoustic treatment and honestly some of the very best acoustic treatment out there is stuff that you probably already own and that's furniture. Particularly bookcases stacked with books, sofas, curtains, and that kind of thing. I've actually seen commercial recording studios with, you know, that can afford basically any of the highest end, most expensive acoustic treatment available, but they opt to go for bookcases with thousands of books stacked because they prefer the sound. That's exactly what I've done in this space. I've actually moved two sofas, one regular and one sofa bed, because it doubles up as a spare bedroom in my house. And my next decision in this room is whether to add, you know, proper long, heavy curtains, because I know that's gonna improve things even further. Tip three is to use a mix of absorption and diffusion. Obviously, absorption-based panels will absorb high frequencies and, you know, deaden the sound, whereas diffusion scatter the high frequencies. And the reason I bring these two up is because I believe that in most cases, high frequencies are gonna be the biggest problem. And that's why, personally, I like a room to sound neutral, natural, and open, rather than just completely dead and dull. And for that, I use a mixture, as I mentioned, of absorption-based panels, I use furniture, as I mentioned, and RT diffusers, the latter, like I mentioned, won't deaden the sound, but instead scatter high frequencies, maintaining that more natural sound. Plus, they look wicked, so. Tip four, don't bother with bass traps. This is going to be a controversial take, I know. But in reality, I just feel like they're very bulky. They are quite expensive and pretty bad value for money. And I think you probably just need a ton of them to make a real noticeable difference in your space. Instead, what I recommend is, as I already mentioned, adding furniture and then just keeping the volume on your studio monitors low and that way you won't kind of get a build up of those low frequencies. Tip five is to add acoustic treatment gradually. 
And the reason I say that is because by adding them bit by bit, you can then, you know, you can assess what your room needs next and then address it. Plus, you know, as you know, if you're going to be buying acoustic treatment, acoustic treatment can be annoyingly expensive. You know, kind of you feel ripped off every time you buy some. And this way you can just spread the cost. And I like that. Tip six is to not ignore the ceiling. You know, the ceiling is a large flat area that, you know, if left untreated, will just scatter those high frequencies and sound pretty terrible. The way to address this is to get what's called a cloud. It's basically just an acoustic panel that you can hang, but once installed can have a huge impact on the sound of your room. Tip seven, and in the same vein, don't forget about the floor. You know, if your room already has a thick carpet, don't worry, you are in great shape, don't worry. If you've got anything less than that, then I would definitely consider and recommend popping a rug down. And the way to do that is, you know, you can get some incredible rugs secondhand for very little money. And honestly, it has such a monumental impact on your sound. You'll be amazed. It's exactly what I did this in this room because when I moved in earlier this year, it has the thinnest carpet and it's it sounded quite sort of reflective as it is. So I have a rug down and it's just made a massive difference. Okay, now let's take everything in this video, grind it up and make a delicious espresso of tips to take away. Firstly, monitors are better than headphones. Everyone agrees about this. It's gonna be the best option for getting you a really good sound that translates to the real world. Use furniture first. You never know, you might have just what you need to make your room sound great without even spending a penny. Address the high frequencies by choosing a mix of absorption and diffusion for a really balanced sound. You'll have to use your ear, of course, but I'm sure you'll get there. Personally, I wouldn't bother with bass traps. I get it when, you know, commercial studios have these or mastering engineers, but for filmmaking, I really don't think they're necessary. Save your cash. I recommend adding your acoustic treatment gradually, bit by bit. That way you can add something, address issues, and spread the cost whilst you're doing it. Don't forget to treat the ceiling. I feel like this is an area that's really neglected and has a huge impact once treated. Of course, we can't forget the floor. All it takes is a secondhand rug. You'll be astounded with the difference that this can make. Anyway, there we go. I sincerely hope you found this interesting and helpful. I wanna hear from you. What did I miss? Do you agree? What would you do differently? And, you know, do you have any tips? And, you know, let's just share them all. And, uh, you know, after all, this channel has always been about learning and sharing. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video, of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.